how much you, uh, how much you can swallow, I guess. Well, how it's, much? well, it's a matter of how much that, uh, our professional world has wanted us to know about. And you know, uh, one of the one of the main concepts of being able to control the masses, I've been told, is to keep them uneducated, keep them entertained, are and, wrongly educated, are, are wrongly educated, and also uh, keep them um, keep them uh, fattened up to the point that they don't care. And that's exactly what this government has done. It has basically created monsters. Yeah, well, you know, humans, uh, they do way better once they're, once they got a taste of liberty, and, and that's why we write things down and keep history, is so people remember that, you know. Exactly, where you won't make the same mistake. Yeah, and plus, I mean, they had to fight pretty hard just for us to get here, where, you know, have a country, you know. And they had to give their lives, sweat, blood, and tears to get where we are today. And then, you know, and then, but when they don't know anything about it, and they're not, and they're around people who don't care, it's it, all about, you know, the culture and, you know, whatever, whatever kids are up to. Well, they're bringing out something just within the past 24 hours that I wasn't aware of, and it had something to do with somebody, I guess, that was over in Afghanistan fighting that that wrote a book pertaining to the uh, the great uh, escape whenever Biden basically ordered for all the troops to come home and to leave all that yeah. equipment over there. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, they're uh, saying they're saying now that that our military had had um, heads up towards what was fixing to happen, pertaining to a suicide mission. Yeah. And we could have intervened and didn't. That's almost like the Benghazi deal with Hillary Clinton in it. Yeah, that's, yeah. It's that's awful similar. Comparison. It's awful similar in comparison, isn't it? Well, boy, that's still, that's fixing my craw. You know, Ambassador Stevens was a pretty good guy. Yes, he was. And they dragged him through the street. And, uh, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. We're dealing with monsters on the other side of the ocean. You know what I'm saying? I mean, pure mirror monsters. Anybody that's willing to train a group of men to to uh, get into an airplane and basically turn it into a damn missile, uh, they're pretty damn desperate in, in what they want in what they want to achieve or their statement that they want to make. But whenever we have to fight within our own selves a people that's either neglect or or uh, or or whatever towards them not doing their jobs effectively, then it makes everybody's job bad, right? Well, yeah, it's contagious, that's for sure. That's what I'm saying. One bad apple spoils a whole bunch. Now, you've learned a great deal in, in your... Uh, in your, I guess, how long was you in in that uh, fire department stuff and and ham radio stuff and knowing about uh, airwaves and stuff like that? Well, let's see. About I had about twenty two years in the fire department or more. I forget. And then I've been a ham for about well I, now for about oh, twenty years or so. I forget. I got you. Was you a ham? Uh, when was, was you a ham? Whenever you was up there in, in uh, New Mexico. Yeah, that's where I. That's where I picked up. Yeah. That's where you picked it up at. Yeah, I got an English buddy that kind of showed me the ropes, and then and I read a lot of books. So it's easy nowadays with computers. You can really learn shit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If you know where to look. Well, um, in that area that I first met you at. Yeah. It it looked like there was like a was it was it a uh, garbage thing in behind there or was it a salvage yard? What was that in behind in behind all that? Well, that was Casey's land. The I, fella that was there with us that day. I know, but but what was it? Was that a salvage yard in behind there? Well, no, his his dad passed away, and but in the 
30s and 40s, his dad worked at Los Alamos and, and bought a lot of salvage junk and towed it home, you know. Okay, so then you was familiar with Ed Groth, the guy that, that uh, created yeah. the uh, black hole there in Los Alamos? Yeah. How well did yeah, you know how well did you know him? Well, I never met him, but I I've been to the black hole once and then but I uh I didn't have much money to buy anything but uh they did have a nice oscilloscope though that was cheap and I, I got out of there. I gave that to a friend of mine up here, the electrician. Yeah. So he's got an old scope from the nuclear lab. I got you. I got you. Um, you know that that Ed he got busted or shaken down three or four different times, but they never could find nothing on him. Well, he was pretty vocal about you know of the evils of the bomb and stuff. I guess he was a bomb doctor, you know. And, and uh, I've known a few of them guys, man. You know. You have. They're kind. Yeah, they're kind of way out there, ain't they? They're kind of. They're kind of different. I mean, uh, kind of a weird type different, ain't they? Well, you got to be kind of. You know, they're they're real reserved people. Uh, but I've had a beer with a couple of them and and listened to them speak. And, you know. Well, you know that movie that they just come out pretending to. What, what was the name of it? Um, Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer. Um. The movie only touched a little bit about the Manhattan Project that actually began in East Tennessee. And it was as if that they was trying to conceal or, uh, you know, suppress that information away from the general public about what actually occurred in East Tennessee. The thing about what happened in East Tennessee, there was a lot, a lot of sacrifices that went on for, for uh, you and me and everybody else to have our freedoms that we have to this day. You know what I'm saying? Which national...